The poem that we're doing in this session is Assassination by Don Lee. You'll notice that I've also added the name that he took on later. He changed his name. Um, I put that there for a reason because I'm going to be completely straight with you at the outset. When I was researching this poem, I discovered that there were two quite different interpretations from different teachers, from different academics. The, the poem is interpreted in two quite different ways. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you quite a lot of historical background um, as to the political situation at the time that the poem was written. And I'm going to give you quite a lot of information about the poet himself to enable you to come to your own decision about how you choose to interpret the poem. You know what it's like with poetry. You can, you can argue for a number of different interpretations as long as you can substantiate it from the poem itself. The difficulty with this poem is that it's quite short and there isn't a lot of meat to it. And so it's going to be quite tricky to find something to, to base your interpretation on. But by the end of this, you'll, you'll know um, how to do that because it's quite simple and I'm going to explain it to you very clearly. So moving on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, some, some uh, uh, political background for you. Okay. Um, here is where we're just going to look at some of the, the sort of the key points in the 60s. And, and really, the 60s were crazy in America because there were some really high profile assassinations during the 60s. It started with JFK, who was um, assassinated, as you know, in the, in the early 60s. Um, JFK was a Democratic president. Um, on the sur surface of it, it is a bit debatable, but on the surface of it, a supporter of Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement. He was, it was followed shortly after that by the assassina assassination of Michael X, uh, Malcolm X, sorry, um, also a civil rights activist, a slightly more aggressive um, activist. He was assassinated in 1965. And then later in the 60s, we had um, a, a successor to JFK, a senator who was also running for, for um, president at that time, also a civil rights supporter, assassinated in uh, the middle of 1968 and in the same year a little bit earlier we had Martin Luther King whom you you all know of course so that's the 60s it's nuts it, it, it was a crazy time and that's the time in which this poem takes place and that's the time that this poem is about I'm going to give you some information about um, the poet himself he also um, is an interesting individual in the sense that he um, comes from a very typically poor difficult uh, background, a lot of violence in it. His father left him. His mother was killed violently. Um, he was a, an opponent of racial integration, not in the sense that he believed that people should be separate, not in an apartheid sense, but in the sense that he felt that African Americans should take control of their own destiny, should retain their sense of identity and their sense of power. And that particular political stance is important for this poem because it will, it will go some way towards um, the, your, the, ma the manner in which you interpret this poem. So let me get my face out the way and let's take a look at the poem itself. It was wild, the bullet hit high, the throat neck, and from everywhere, the motel, from under bushes and cars, from around corners and across streets, out of the garbage cans and from rattles in the earth, they came running, with guns drawn, they came running, toward the king, all of them, fast and sure, as if the king was going to fire back. They came running fast and sure in the wrong direction. So that's the poem. It's about an assassination. Of course, we need to know whose assassination and the answer is quite simple. It is the assassination of Martin Luther King. We know this because he talks about the fact he refers directly to the king and that's Martin Luther King that he's referring to. This is a picture of Martin Luther King and um, two of his um, friends and supporters, Jesse James, also quite a well-known person on the left-hand side, they're standing on the balcony of the hotel at which he was assassinated. This is minutes before he was actually shot. The night before, he had given another one of his famous speeches. It's called the I Have Been to the Mountaintop speech. You can, you can look it up. It's another one of his very famous speeches. And there's a sadly ironic quote from the speech that I've, that I've included there. But here we have Martin Luther King. Um, standing, getting ready to, to speak to some people. He had some other engagements at that time, um, just, just before he was shot. So let's, let's get to the poem. It starts off with this phrase, it was wild. Now, there's something that you need to notice about the poem straight away, and you'll see it right away. There's no, there's no capitals. It just starts in the middle of nowhere. It was wild. And you're left with this idea, well, like, what was wild? It. It's almost as if he's 
been talking about something and, and we've, we've sort of arrived halfway through the conversation. The, the word wild, of course, is a, um, some 60s slang. Wild, you know, it was insane. It was crazy. Like, you can't believe it. It's, just, it's the same sort of meaning. But we've got this kind of anecdotal tone because he's just relaying what was happened. Um, and we start with that sentence, like, it was wild. It, it just, you know, in the middle of something. We don't know exactly what it was yet, but we, get, we found out pretty quickly because straight away we get the sentence, the bullet hit high. And this reference to the throat and the neck is also one of the indicators that tells us that this was Martin Luther King because that was where he was shot. He was shot in the throat. The interesting thing about the structure, just look at the structure there, is you've got that first short stanza and then in brackets, almost as an afterthought, the throat, neck, that's where the bullet hit. But it's kind of hectic, isn't it? Because, you know, this idea of being hit in the throat, in the neck by a bullet is almost added as if it was an afterthought. It's just sort of put there in brackets, that's where it hit. But actually, that is really important because he puts it in brackets, but then he also puts it on a line on its own. So the brackets make it seem like it's not that important, but the placement of the line emphasizes the importance. And, and, and so we've, we've got very deliberate structural choices being made in this poem. The reference to the throat and the neck deliberately um, conjure up this idea of vulnerability. You know, if you can get shot in the arm or whatever, you know, the, I don't know, the leg or something, it's not nearly the same as that really vulnerable spot on the throat. So, so we've got reference to a very vulnerable point. And that's deliberate. You're going to see later on. It's not like he doesn't just say he was shot. He doesn't say he was shot. He says the bullet hit. It's almost passive. We don't even know who he's talking about yet. And where did it hit? It hit in a really vulnerable place. He's, he's deliberately creating uh, an image here of, of something shocking and violent, but we still don't quite know who he's talking about yet. Of course, we we know who he's talking about, and so we've got an I you know an idea of of the violence of that act. Uh, these this is a series of photos that were taken all on the same day. So that one that that I put in the in the first slide there is just before. This is the is the is the shot that follows. You can see it's a bit gruesome. There's a lot of blood, but that's because he was shot in the neck. Um, straight after that, you've got people saying that's that's where the shot came from. That's where the shot came from, because. Everybody's trying to, to look and see what happened. I'm giving you these photographs because I want you to form an idea of, of the kind of chaos that would have ensued after something like this. You've got someone just kind of walking out. He's a hero of his people. And the next thing he's shot and it's crazy. And the poem is going to talk about that because that's what happens next. Suddenly, look at the structure of, of this stanza. And from everywhere, um, you've got um, still no punctuation, but you've got a much more dense um, stanza here. The use of the um, the ampersand, you know what an ampersand is, that little curly thing over there, instead of an and, makes it seem even quicker. It speeds up the pace even more. It's, it's, it's conversational, it's informal. He's saying there, it was wild, the bullet hit, and then from everywhere, you know, people came running. Look at all of the, the places where they came running from, the motel, under bushes, cars, around corners. So you've got the shot, and then you've got lots and lots of people running. I want to point out two things here. The one is where they're coming from. So just look at some of the places they're coming from. You've got them coming from garbage cans and from rat holes. What kind of people do you think are going to be running from those places? What are the implications in that? And what is the connotation of, of that? Because the question that you are going to be left with in this poem is who are the they that are being referred to? They came running. Who are they? Now, this is where we have some discrepancy around who they might be. The one interpretation talks to the fact that these people could be people who were previously not really that visible. There's just, you know, kind of people that arrive and then, I mean, that, that, that are around. And then suddenly when something happens, they all seem to appear out of nowhere. If they come from places like garbage cans and rat holes, then that suggests that either they're really poor or that they're really scummy. They might be criminals or lowlifes. You know, where, where are they coming from? Are these the kinds of people that were affected by um, Martin Luther King's assassination? Or, and here we have the alternative interpretation, 
Or is he talking about the assassins? They are the people that come running. Is he referring to the assassins who were intent on killing Martin Luther King? Because they are running towards him. Does this mean they're running towards him with intent to do further harm? Or in the previous interpretation, are these people that are running towards him because they see that he's been hurt? Just keep those two options in mind. We have a repetition of they came running. You get it three more times. They came running in the previous stanza and then they came running, they came running again. They came running with guns drawn. So now we've got these people coming out and now their guns are drawn. So now things are getting a little bit more difficult. They can't just be random observers because they wouldn't all have their guns drawn, would they? So the fact that he refers to the guns drawn supports the interpretation that the they have evil intent, that they are linked to the assassination in some way. And you'll notice that King is the only word that is actually capitalized in the entire poem. So clearly that's the most important word in the poem, but we still don't know who they are. Now you'll note the repetition. So the repetition obviously is telling us that whoever they are is important because he's said it so many times, but we still aren't certain who they exactly are. It could be people coming to protect Martin Luther King with their guns drawn, but we know from what the, the outcome of the entire situation was that even if they did run to protect him, that they're too late and that all of their running is pointless because he's already been shot. If that's the interpretation, then that's gonna link quite strongly to the end of the poem. And you'll, you'll see when we get there, that bit where he says they come running in the wrong direction that pointlessness might be what he is building up towards by the repetition of they came running, they came running, because he's saying they're running, they're running, they're running, but it's pointless because they're all running in the wrong direction. Or you've got this alternative interpretation, which is that um, the, the they are the assassins. Now, if he's calling the, if he is referring to the assassins, we know that there weren't a lot of assassins who killed King. It was just one shooter. And so why would he choose to pluralize it in this way? Why would he choose to refer to them as being many? The possible interpretation here is that there were many people who, in, who wanted King to die. So it's not just that there was one shooter, but that his death was the result of an entire system or an entire um, uh, kind of cohort of people who, who desired his death. So it's almost as if, it's almost a form of metonymy. Metonymy is when one thing, when, when a greater thing is represented by another thing, uh, a smaller part of that thing. And so the they could be a reference to the entire system that brought about the death of Martin Luther King. Here we have a photograph taken on that same day of the police running to respond. They, they had heard that the shooter had emerged from a building and they ran towards the shooter. Incidentally, they didn't catch him on the day. Um, he escaped and it took them quite some time to find the person who shot him, uh, even though that wasn't also, that also wasn't the correct person, but that's a different story. And this is the last section of the poem. All of them, all of these people that are running, the they, all of them, fast and sure, as if the king was going to fire back. You notice that the king is still um, capitalized. Now, we know that Martin Luther King was a pacifist. He was a supporter of, of the, um, Gandhi's ideal of, of passive resistance. And so that little line there, as if the king was going to fire back, is a reference to the fact both that Martin Luther King couldn't possibly have fired back. He was dead almost instantly. So he was completely helpless and he was unable to defend himself. And also a reference to the fact that he's a pacifist and he, and he wouldn't have fired back anyway. Notice here the repetition of fast and sure. What are those words telling you? Fast. They, they know exactly where they're going. They're going there quickly and sure. There's certainty. Um, they, they, they know what they're doing. Now that fast and sure is also calculated. The repetition of the fast and sure is calculated to build up a climax to the end of the poem, which is that they're all going in the wrong direction. So what's the point of the certainty and, and this speed? if it's not taking you to the right place. Because that is the irony of this poem. Everybody who's responding is going the wrong way. Now, on one level, on a simple level, this could be just a fact that 
that the poet is criticizing people who ran towards King when they should have actually been looking for who shot him. Um, it could be criticizing the fact that they were, you know, all of the people who responded to his death responded in, in, in a misguided kind of way. On a metaphorical level, he could be saying that when they did respond, they should have, they should have done so differently. And this is the, one of the, the reasons why I gave you some information on, on Lee, because he actually advocated for a more aggressive response to the shooting of, of Martin Luther King and the violence perpetrated against black people. He didn't believe in King's pacifist uh, stance. He actually felt that people should be putting their foot down and that they should be doing something uh, more, more assertive. So he could be saying here that all of these people that responded to Martin Luther King's death did so in the wrong way, that their response was, was in the right, wrong direction. Of course, notwithstanding that we know historically that um, the riots that arose as a result of Martin Luther King's assassination were, were really hectic. Um, they caused a massive wave of civil unrest. Um, there, were, there, were, there were riots, there was looting, there was police brutality, there was violence, there, the army was brought in. Um, uh, uh, the, the assassination triggered a lot of anger and maybe what you've got is a poet here saying that that anger is completely justified. Just on a historical note, um, I, I, I referred to it earlier about the shooter. Um, we have since come to learn that the person that was charged with with, Luther's, uh, with Luther King's assassination was not actually the person re responsible for his death. Um, you can look it up, you can go and do some historical research if you want to, but there were later civil cases that um, uh, gave awarded damages to Martin Luther King's family against completely different people. It did actually turn out that there was there was a lot of collusion. You know, it was a, a plotted thing. Uh, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to to know what went on in in this assassination. So ultimately, what you end up with is, as I said, a poem with two possible interpretations. The one interpretation is that the poem describes the brutality of his assassination. Um, and it describes the confusion that arose directly after the assassination, but the line in the wrong direction is a criticism of the lack of <clears throat> direction of the black civil rights movement following his death. The alternative interpretation is that um, the, 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 the people who are referred to the they and the wrong direction is actually referring to the assassins, in which case, what he's commenting on is how incredibly organized this assassination was, that there were many people involved in it and aware of it. And he is the repetition that we see then in the poem, the they came running and the they came running and they came running, is all meant to emphasize how vulnerable and how peaceful Martin Luther King was and how heinous it was that his that he was killed in that manner. And in that case, the poem is actually a, a plea to the followers of Martin Luther King to respond in a similarly violent manner because it's emphasizing the, the violence of the, of the assassination um, contrasted with the, the helplessness of Martin Luther King. So those are your two possible interpretations. Take a look at the poem again and decide if, if uh, uh, which one of those resonates with you. As I said, it's a simple poem. There are elements of structure that are that are notable, but they're they're not complicated. And as long as you understand uh, the manner in which this poem has been put together, notably the repetition of certain lines, the emphasis of certain lines, and importantly that last line in the wrong direction. As long as you can contextualize all of that, you'll be a for away. <laughs>